Raptors fans knew that changes needed to be made in the offseason, but a few days into free agency, the front office has made no moves of significance, and it's largely as a result of Bruce Brown's contract. Let's get into it. The situation is looking bleak for the Raptors as the Bruce Brown contract is causing the Raptors some significant issues in finding free agent help. The team has not brought in any new players and with very limited options left on the table, what can we actually expect the Raptors to achieve in this offseason where it's very clear they need to rectify things after only winning 25 games last season, tanking, finishing with a bottom six record in the NBA Things need to be turned around. You just invested a whole bunch of money into Scotty Barnes. Well, you need to try and put talent around him to try and maximize his abilities. You just give Emmanuel quickly a big contract. You need to give those players the platform and tools to succeed on the floor. But as of right now, nothing has actually happened for the Raptors. And I'm going to explain why over the course of the video today on Amateur Hour Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to Toronto Raptors content in videos like this, as well as live streams on the channel. Drop a like if you enjoy along the way and subscribe for even more Raptors content all offseason and beyond. So the Raptors obviously acquired Bruce Brown in the Pascal Siakam trade. That trade has been deemed to be extremely underwhelming. I wouldn't say it was good, but I wouldn't say it was bad either. The Raptors get, did get the 19th overall pick. They got a 2026 first round pick via Indiana as well. And they also got the 29th overall pick from this year's draft, which they turned into Kelly Olynyk and Oche Abaji. But also in the trade, alongside Kyra Lewis, they got Bruce Brown in the deal. And what... The appeal was for Bruce Brown was the Raptors' ability to flip him or trade him down the line. A trade did not materialize over the course of last season as the Raptors were looking for future first-round picks. Particularly, they were looking for picks for the 2025 draft or the 2026 draft. But at the 2024 NBA trade deadline, the only draft picks that were being offered up were first-round picks for the 2024 draft, where the Raptors didn't really feel as though it was the strongest class to really stack up picks for. They uh, seemingly at the time did not want to bring in too many rookies at once, which they obviously ignored because they drafted four players this year, which we'll also talk about. But in the end, the Raptors did not want to settle for a 2024 pick. They wanted those future picks, and they felt as though they could wait that out and eventually receive that. Perhaps that could be on the table down the line, but in the present, things are very much not looking good right now, and it's giving the Raptors, once again, this significant issue in signing for agents. The reality is the Raptors, in order to maximize the possibility of trading Bruce Brown, had to take on his team option on a contract that was too expensive. They knew that when they traded for him, and they knew this was going to be a possibility, but what ended up happening in this situation that kind of handcuffed themselves is they had to take that $23 million team option to, again, retain the possibility of trading the player and bringing in assets. The issue there is that, well, if you are going to take on that team option and you're not going to have free agents lined up within the cap based on the situation of picking up that team option, that may have been a mistake. You know, it's one thing if the Raptors pick up the $23 million option on, on Bruce Brown's contract keep him with the team, and there's always that possibility that I've said previously on this channel of trading him down the line. You can be patient. Like, Bruce Brown is a good player. Let's not forget that. Like, like a year ago, imagine if you were told that at the start of this season, Bruce Brown would be on the Raptors. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Bruce Brown's a good player. I think he fits well with the Raptors. He's a good ball handler. He's switchable on offense. He's switchable on defense. There's certain elements of his game that he has that other Raptors players don't possess. I like having Bruce Brown on the team. However... Maybe fans are a bit sour because of his involvement in the Siakam trade, which has been deemed by some as underwhelming. Perhaps people are upset because Bruce Brown didn't play well near the end of the season. He said himself he was dealing with an injury. I would also say the Raptors were tanking and they sucked. It's hard to play well in that environment, especially when you're Bruce Brown, a more complimentary player. But in the end, Bruce Brown is a good player. It's nice to have that on your team in the worst case scenario. However, it doesn't really make sense to pick up that team option without having a free agent in place that you feel like you could sign within your cap constraints that that contract created. And it doesn't really make sense to pick up that team option, not having that trade lined up if you don't have any free agents lined up in that cap situation. Because the cap situation right now is bleak for the Raptors. There is about seemingly around $13 million in cap space available for the Toronto Raptors. That's probably decreased a little bit given the only thing the Raptors have done so far in free agency is bring back Garrett Temple. Look, good vet presence, whatever. Fine, bring him back for a season on a cheap contract. But that's the only piece of business the Raptors have done. 
they seemingly won't have access to the full mid-level exception, which again makes it more difficult for the team to bring in a free agent. And a lot of the options that were out there, be it guys who can play wing defense and a rip attacking center, a lot of those options have just completely passed them by. And it's largely as a result of the Bruce Brown contract. The contract has completely nullified all of their ability to make a move. Even with an outgoing free agent like Gary Trent Jr., there's still a possibility of bringing Gary Trent Jr. back. I have been way off on my views of what Gary Trent's contract is going to be in all of my videos in this channel. I've been saying that, like, look, I don't really rate Gary Trent. I'm not that fond of him as a player, but even in my pessimistic views, I'm thinking, like, he's worth at least $16 million, right? Like, should he even get that? But he'll probably will. Now the market, according to Michael Grange of Sportsnet, has decreased so much that he's not even getting offers in the mid-level exception territory. He's getting contracts likely in the range of about $10 million per year, it seems. So that presents a little wrinkle with Gary Trent. That presents potentially an opportunity for the Raptors to re-sign him or Gary Trent to sign a cheap one-year deal elsewhere as a sort of prove-it contract, earn that bigger contract next summer when more cap space opens up for some teams. There's a better understanding of the second apron and its implication on organizations around the NBA. But all of these hypothetical moves the Raptors can make are hampered by this Bruce Brown contract. The Raptors won't understand until he's traded, it seems, what their cap situation is going to be. Are they going to take back full salary for Bruce Brown? Are they going to take back partial salary of that $23 million for Bruce Brown? They don't know. And until they know what the salary is, they're operating so close to what would be pay paying the luxury tax that perhaps they don't want to risk making any signings without having the full understanding of the situation of the finances of the team. So... My thoughts on Bruce Brown were there shouldn't be any real rush to trade him. And, you know, I still kind of stand by that thought that you can get a pick down the line. You can still trade him close to the trade deadline. He's a good player who at the absolute worst case scenario, if he's still on your team, can help you guys out on the floor. But that in unison with not having any potential free agents lined up, not having seemingly any possible trade lined up at this point, is a bit of a fumble by the Raptors front office. It's clear that, okay, there's some good pieces in place for the Raptors here, but it's also clear that we needed to add in some depth. The, there's a still a distinct lack of defense overall on this team, on the wings, as I've said. I've mentioned that the three things the Raptors need to address, backup point guard, big wing defender, rim protecting center for the backup spot. They brought in a backup point guard and Davian Mitchell. They're going to give him competition with 45th overall pick Jamal Shedd. And they didn't really address the big wing defender. Maybe they feel like Jacoby Walter can make some progression, the 19th overall pick on the defensive end of the floor. But they've absolutely done nothing to address getting a rim protecting center. Like Jonathan Mobo, 31st overall pick, maybe a switchable defender, but as a six foot seven center, 31st overall pick, can I really trust him out the gates to get those backup center minutes for the role that I've described? Not really. So, Maybe the Raptors understood that there were going to be some issues in free agency. They were going to have some struggles finding players to sign for their team. And they decided to do their work in the draft. Maybe that's why they ignored their previous comments of only wanting to work with two rookies. And they decided to bring in four. Jacoby Walter at 19 was a great pick. Jonathan Mobo at 31. You understand it, but perhaps was a bit of a reach. Jamal Shedd brings some competition to the backup point guard spot. Oris Shamshay is a fun little project for the Raptors to take on for one of the youngest players in the draft class. Not going to be a significant player, definitely, from day one, but potentially down the line. So that's where the Raptors did the bulk of their work here. They decided, let's invest in the draft. Let's reinvest to get more picks for the draft because we have the understanding that we're not going to be a big player in the free agent market. But one thing also to note for the Raptors, the final thing here is that even if the Raptors didn't pick up this Bruce Brown contract, you have to understand kind of, where the Raptors are situated with this market. On a year-to-year -year basis, they are not a major player in the free agent market. So if the Raptors had ignored the Bruce Brown contract, let him walk and decide, okay, let's be a capped based team here because we, we can't get anything for Bruce Brown through a trade, there's also the possibility that they still wouldn't have been able to sign any free agents. So if that was a situation, maybe the safest bet was to keep Bruce Brown, see if you can trade him down the line Worst case, he's on your team and he's a good player to have on the roster. But overall, it feels like at this present point, 
free agency has been a pretty big failure for the Raptors. There were needs that needed to be addressed, and the Raptors have done nothing as of yet. So we'll see. I mean, look, Bruce Brown can get traded later today, tomorrow, next week, but it could be in some month's time as well. We don't really know what the situation is, but the bottom line is the Raptors need to figure out a way to get some more talent into this team or what's already a roster struggling to compete with an East that is improving this summer is going to have even more difficulties next season and hopefully it doesn't turn into a disaster season like it did in the 2023 and 2024. So what have you made of the Raptors offseason so far and what do you make of Bruce Brown's contract? Give me all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that's all for me for today. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed to Amateur Sports for more Raptors content and I'll see you next time for another video.